And it is my opinion that the thing that is most lacking, obviously there's 900 things that we need to do in 900 different directions, but the thing that is the most, the biggest bottleneck we have that is also the most requested uh, is mass upload. It's Martin Dammers. Yeah, Martin Dammers is our biggest bot bottleneck. <laughs> uh, so, and we can also phrase that in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> that Martin Dammers is uh, the person we all rely on for when we want more than 20 images up on commons at the same time. The number of organizations that have been coming to Wikimedia uh, of their own choice, not even without us having to ask them, asking us to upload 10,000 images, 20,000 images is increasing and the acceptance of metadata sharing and uh, open licensing and all these kinds of things is increasing. Yet, and you can see this by the popularity of Flickr Commons. Uh, Flickr Commons has a three year head start on us in terms of really professionally handing mass upload projects for cultural heritage. Except that they're now closed uh, because uh, Flickr Commons is owned by uh, Yahoo and Yahoo has no money. And so the most popular project for cultural heritage organizations to share their collection online is now not accepting new members. So I think this is both a big opportunity and also the thing that should have been done by us three years ago, uh, that we need to have a better way to accept large amounts of multimedia and its metadata, which is the really tricky part, and be able to report back how it's being used. And we have had many attempts, and I'm going to ask Martin Thomas to come up now, many attempts to solve this problem on an ad hoc basis, on a one by one basis in the past. And I think now we need to actually do it properly and do it from the, the ground up in a a professionally organized way that we can no longer rely on individual user scripts for this very important function. So Martin, if you could give a, a short run through of the various things that we've done in the past that work, but do not scale. Last time I was giving a presentation at our uh, Wikimedia Nailon conference, and about halfway my laptop failed, the power went down. So I really need power right now. It's uh, the problem. This is me. Uh, I'm a user multi-tool on the, on the comments. Um, I'm involved in all sorts of different projects. Uh, among them, it's uh, the batch uploading. Uh, for example, the Museum is one of the projects I worked on. They uh, gave us a really huge collection of images. Uh, people are still working on it, helping to categorize it, add translations, um, integrate them in articles. Um, we also had other problems. I'm not the only one, for example, uh, Dominic here, uh, stand up Dominic, uh, is working uh, uh, silently on the comments, getting this really massive collection of images from the National Archive onto the Commons and uh, it's complicated. It's all uh, scripted work, uh, bots and code that's hacked up and we don't have enough time so we take existing code, modify a bit, hey it works, just stand back and hope it doesn't crash, <laughs> which happens a lot. Uh, but for example, uh, Olger is also here, he uh, uploaded images from the Nordiska Museet, did I say that right? Uh, that's the same thing. I, uh, I think uh, Dominic used some code by me, uh, modified a bit. Holger wrote something himself, some Perl script or difficult. And we don't really scale that well. We managed to do a, a lot of uploads. Uh, I myself did over 2 million uploads in the last couple of years. But, uh, 
the list of uh, donations we got, and we work, worked on this getting bigger and bigger. You, you might recognize some of them. We try to make uh, these little templates to uh, identify them. The Kinko can take those now. So, uh, for example, the Brooklyn Museum was the first museum to actually do it themselves. It was uh, they had someone hire someone to actually write code and put it online, make statistics and. I'm amazed they actually managed to get it all up there and get decent statistics because it's really complicated. Uh, so we have all these projects and they're all custom. They're all uh, uh, single use, they don't scale. And we have this huge backlog at, for example, this is the page where you can request someone to do an upload. And I'm not sure how big it is, but it goes down a long way. I think we're at 50 right now. 52 uh, requests for putting things online. Um, yeah, we just can't cope with it right now. Uh, actually, well, the uploading of, of the files is the easy part. It's the handling of the metadata. That's the difficult part. So er anyone can just fire up a program and put a million files online. We're putting a, online a million files with the right metadata, so have the right author, have the right source, uh, put maybe assign some, some categories or do something so other people can find them and use them. But that's actually why we have the comments. You have images which can be used on Wikipedia, and to be used, you have to find them. That's difficult. Uh, we made a guide, and as you can see, uh, this in Dutch it says. Uh, uh, we're still working on it, we have to improve it. Uh, I think someone broke the language switching, so if I click this, oh, it works again. Uh, it's very complicated at the moment, and it doesn't really scale. You need to be uh, a computer scientist or someone really eager to get it working to be able to do this. Uh, so, metadata and numbers is the problem at the moment. We don't scale and we uh, don't need a new standard for this to, uh, we just need to take existing metadata and somehow seem to merge it in the things we're using. And that's uh, the next project all done. While we sit up. So that's a, a uh, summary of the kinds of problems and kind of projects that have happened thus far. So um, now we'd like to hear from David from yeah. Europeana, which is an organization based in the Netherlands, funded by the European Union uh, for cultural heritage online. You can describe your own company. Okay, hi again, I'm David Huskia. You've, uh, Liam has uh, presented the background. You're uh, victims of your own success in the Glam Outreach program at uh, Wikimedia. There are 52 uh, organizations waiting, and I probably think there are even more who would like to come on board. Uh, at Europeana, we aggregate metadata from about 1,500 European cultural institutions. So we have some experience with the whole metadata um, challenge, uh, which XKCD uh, described very succinctly. Uh, we have uh, had contacts with uh, Wikimedia and various Wikimedia chapters. So we, we, as in not Europeana, but we as in Europeana and a number of the European Wikimedia chapters would like to see if we can come to a solution to the challenge of uh, mass upload from mass amounts of GLAMs. So, this is not a very sexy project name. GLAM Wiki Toolset Project, please come up with a better one. But we have a memorandum of understanding now, together. So we are- Aurora. Aurora, Project Aurora, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Operation Project Manhattan, I don't know. Um, 
The idea is to build a scalable curator-friendly system for mapping metadata and mass uploading content from Glams to Wikimedia Commons. And the reverse process. Once things have been translated, had their metadata improved, old uh, daguerreotype images had uh, been digitally restored, Glams should be able to track that, download it again from Wikimedia Commons to reintegrate into their own systems. We also need to provide very clear requirements to the data analytics team uh, in San Francisco, the Wikimedia Foundation's own team, so that GLAMS can get the kind of usage statistics that they need to satisfy their stakeholders. Because their stakeholders will ask, so why are you uploading things to Wikimedia? Uh, why don't people come to your own website? Uh, they don't realize that Wikipedia is the fifth biggest platform in the world, and a typical museum is somewhere around 150,000 in a global ranking. So, we museums need those statistics to satisfy their stakeholders, and if they can't, they won't have the guts to upload to Wikimedia Commons. So, we're starting a project, uh, hopefully starting in April next year. It will run for 24 months. We will combine developers recruited specifically for the project with our own Europeana technical staff plus community developers from, uh, from the wiki community. So we will run it as an open source project. We need to find a way to run it, have a core team plus uh, source code contributions from a community of developers. If the project is successful, the software developed will be integrated into the uh, source code of uh, used by Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons itself. This is not a development for Europeana, it's development for the Wiki community. Um, this is a very ugly sketch. It's The original is hand drawn on the back of a map of Haifa and I think I drew it in between sessions at Wikimania Haifa. Uh, but basically this is what we need to do. We have so many glams here who want to upload uh, so we need to find a system and a framework for it that is user-friendly, but also retains the metadata quality. So it's about, if you really have a happy flow, all this should be about will and not skill. Um, and we need to have the statistics as well. Um, there are different kind of plugins that you can imagine here as well, uh, like public domain calculators, for example, to make sure that what is being uploaded is actually in the public domain or open content. Uh, media transformation. Uh, at Europeana, we have a couple of audio archives who would like to upload their content to uh, Wikimedia Commons. It's public domain audio content, but it's all MP3, and they don't have the resources themselves to transform it into OG files, for example. So would a media transformation plugin here uh, make sense? Things like this. Or to phrase it very different, uh, phrase it differently, Liam himself made a comparison to Flickr, and I think one of the reasons Flickr ha had a success with uh, Flickr the Commons is that the Flickr Pro uploader is really easy for a museum curator or collection manager to use. Um, it's like a simple uh, form that they fill in, the metadata, and then they upload. So the problem that Flickr Commons has is that they can't support themselves financially and they have a long waiting list for it. Once someone actually uh, has passed that waiting list, the actual upload is really easy. The dashboard for statistics is easy to understand and, expo and export the statistics of use from. So, it needs to be as easy as uploading a set of photos to Flickr, but with better metadata handling. I think that's one of the areas where Flickr is not as good as they uh, can be. Uh, so, those are the targets. We have goals in mind. We have uh, the finances for this project. And today, we're really looking for uh, input from the community of what is really uh, the keys to succeed with this project. And uh, I don't know, uh, Liam, is this where we ask the three questions to the community? Uh, I will take that microphone. Yeah. Um, not quite yet. Not quite so, yet. Uh, we will be asking three questions to, to you. But first, I think uh, we need to uh, bring up people who've been involved in the discussion about this for a long time. If the 
the steering group could could come up here. That includes you. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I just have one question about the. Um, Little middle blue box here. It says authorization mapping and transformation. Yeah. I miss uh, another uh, a fourth uh, item, and that would be attribution. Yes, I agree. I think one of the really important things with when we have talked with our glams, the one with open content, uh, attribution is really commercial reuse doesn't scare them. It's actually losing their attribution that scares them in most cases. So these banners that you showed, for example, the partnership templates that are displayed alongside every piece of media, those also need to be really simple to create for uh, a glam curator himself or herself. They shouldn't need some uh, wiki markup experts to do that. And we need to make sure that when we upload, part of the we need always to have uh, the links leading back to the original source, always. And one of the things that we uh, need to work with all the museums is to make sure that those links are uh, persistent. Other but that's more on their side. No, I agree. Is there any way you will handle amplification of a single work? Because to me, one of the big problems seems to be that you really need some kind of unique identification for any single work that is uploaded via this process for both Wikimedia and uh, exporting it to other data systems. How do you define a single work, say the Nachtwacht? Is that a single work so we have multiple reproductions of it? Or every single image? No, no, I mean, I, I definitely mean one single uh, work. So the Nachtwacht is one ID and an image can be another ID. If there's an authoritative database, we can, uh, could of course, include that in the metadata. And, uh, of course, uh, European assigns unique IDs to uh, works. Well, yes, but uh, that's our aggregation. I think, well, in this case, what we need to make sure... Uh, okay, this example, the Nachtwacht. Uh, if I remember my art history correctly, it's in the Rijksmuseum. Uh, the handle, the identifier, the digital identifier uh, Created by the Rijksmuseum, I think would be uh, the identifier to consider the canonical for it. Right, but you, but you have, you know, you have ID number one in the Rijksmuseum, and you have ID number one in the in the Tate Gallery. So certainly. Repeat the question. Okay, certainly. But uh, so uh, what was said was that uh, the same work has another identifier in another museum. And uh, I think the way to handle that would be to have a system that can have, well, in linked open data, you, you would call it same as relationships. Um, and I have a namespace for that. Uh, but to be honest, uh, these are all the things that, we need to, that needs to be solved within the running time of the project to have a framework for it. Yeah, question over here. Um, in the past, I was working together with Magnus Musk from Germany um, regarding metadata of large institutions. Um, since I'm doing lots of imagery restoration from the Library of Congress, I was particularly interested in that area. The Library of Congress itself uh, uses the MARC record system as a system for authority record files. Um, point being, if you are able to find a system like the MARC records, and transfer that system into the wiki world. It's pretty much easy to uh, instantly access all the metadata fittingly for a system that does work on the commons. Um, Magnus was the kind as to uh, create something called the Marksman, which is a tool on the tool server that basically features uh, the, these aspects. Uh, it calculates um, the, the status of the image based on the statements by the Library of Congress. It features uh, information for the media, for the date, for the author, pretty much anything and uh, does look for templates on the commons. There's a lot of work to be done in that area. But do you think that, um, especially for large institutions who work with similar um, yeah, authority record file systems like the MARC record, that this is um, an easier way to attempt the whole thing? Okay. <laughs> I 
saw someone over there shaking his hand heavily. Maybe you want to respond to this? <laughs> I was just going to say, because I think librarians would be horrified, but they all hate Mark and don't want to be using it anymore. I, you, you mentioned linked data. Is that, could we output it all as linked data? I have no idea. Uh, we'll have to take that as one of the input parameters for the project. I, at Europeana, we are aware as well that there are a lot of librarians now who, who transfer away from the Mark format. But one of the things that we need to do in this project is to identify a core set of metadata standards that we do support but we also need to have something like for example this which is, which is a screenshot from a piece of software that we ourselves use at Europeana which is a, a graphical user interface where you can do metadata mapping from a source template to a, a target template and once you've made such a mapping you also share the mapping and others can, re can reuse the same mapping should they have a source template that is very similar. So I still think while many librarians were skeptical to mark, in practice it's used in so many places, so I would expect that to be one of those uh, core metadata templates that a project like this needs to support, together with a couple of museum standards and archive standards like EAD, for example. Uh, sorry, I might have missed this earlier on. I'm just wondering how it's going to be sort of, I don't know a better word for it, but rolled out. Like, is there going to be like, it's available when it's properly ready, or is it going to be like beta, or how will it work, and when can I use it? Do you release? I mean, soon and release often. Well, release soon and release often is the, uh, is the ideal. We're going to run this as an agile scrum project. And, well, I'm not really sure that the, uh, the uh, application that you can run after Sprint 2 will actually be, be uh, ready for mass upload by a large number of GLAMs. But we've set as a target that uh, we should be able to have a public beta at the, end of the, at the end of next year that could actually perhaps not be feature complete, but it should have the basic skeleton in place. Pass the mic, please. Hi. Some of the, some of the glams that I'm dealing with um, are fairly small. They're run by amateur volunteers. They still have very interesting collections and would like to upload their, their images. Um, they're not in a position to provide structured metadata in the various formats that have been talked about. But if we were to suggest to them a simple schema that said, put a spread, give us a spreadsheet or a CSV, and in column one put this field, and in column two put that parameter, they'd be able to use that. Will this account for that sort of simplistic approach? I think we have to, yes. Uh, because otherwise this will remain a reserve of the large GLAM, like European or the National Archive. Uh, so yes. I think that's a little bit why we compared uh, used Flickr as a good comparison, because uh, the basic metadata you need to fill in to upload a photograph to uh, Flickr can pretty much correspond to a core set of columns in a spreadsheet uh, that you uh, use in, a, for example, an, an offline uh, tool together with uh, files that are locally available. They might not even be internet available in, in, to begin with. Uh, so yes, I think we, that's one of the targets we should have in mind for the project. Could you, could you reshape that worry as an opportunity and say you're giving the opportunity to small museums that have never been able to manage uh, linked metadata before to actually plug into something bigger than themselves, which, you know, no, no other infrastructure has been able to do that. Most museums uh, do have some sort of collection management system. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure in the UK you might have a very popular system and we would be able to adapt it so we were able to support that collection management system. So if one of the smaller museums would implement or map it and other museums use a similar system, you could easily uh, join in too. I think you'd be surprised in the UK. The uh, one closed recently, the Archaeology Data Service ended up with its archive, which was a shoebox of floppy disks with uh, unstructured CSV files. And that was in the last 10 years. I have one more question. 
Yeah, one of the key words I wrote down here in your first uh, initial uh, presentation was reintegration. What are you, what's your vision on reintegration? Because that comes back to what he was saying. The small museum that I volunteer at, their metadata sucks and they know it. So uh, they don't want to get caught with their pants down. If they, if they actually give us their, di their, di their data, they're going to look so bad. So it's not even loss of attribution, it's loss of image, I'd say, it's public image. Well, I, I don't know. I, it's, I, I'm not sure uh, it can be solved fully here. If, if you're not willing to upload it to a shared space, then no one can help you fix your metadata. Um, They're willing, but how do you get it back into their system? Okay. Uh, well, I, at least... Reintegration. I mean, yes. What, what, we have, what we have defined as a target is that uh, the, the mapping process that gets you, your data in should be reversible. So that the same mapping should be able to go from Wikimedia Commons back to that original format it came in from. And if you do that, then it should be possible for them on their side to, to feed it back into the original system. But the actual feeding it back into the original system, we can never do for them. But can you mark the changes? That is part of the uh, part of the goal for uh, for the project, yeah. And I think uh, I think there's a John Vandenberg's doing that for the State Library of Queensland. Yeah. He's taking the metadata and giving it back to them on a regular basis. And I think also the Brooklyn Museum is do, doing something similar. At, at least I know that they track those changes once uploaded. I'm not sure they reintegrate it back into their uh, repository. But the tracking is possible to do, I think, in the platform. At the moment, we have a lot of cool pilots actually doing lots of the things we are describing here. But it's all pilots, uh, hacks, uh, uh, proof of concepts, and more uh, like that. Something. Is there any plan to have as part of this project Wikisource support? Uh, well, my answer is I don't know. No, it's uh, not something we've discussed. Uh, but again, if there would be a good reason uh, to do this, uh, uh, please feedback your ideas, uh, your suggestions. I was just about actually to ask exactly the same question. That we've got uh, the museum that one of the museums that I'm working with has. Um, uh, lots of stuff, Admiral Nelson, ships, logs, personal letters, all that stuff. The museum itself doesn't have that much information about it. And it seems perfect for Wikisource, but there needs to be some way of other people adding extra metadata information, but uh, like a separation between the original uh, museum uploading it, like, because the museum wants to keep its integrity if someone else adds us something that is not necessarily true. Um, yeah. I mean, th this is something we do for the for the uh, metadata changes, but this is a project that focuses on mass uploading of multimedia. So I'm not really sure uh, where this would fit in, but we can discuss that, of course. The wiki source has been mentioned here. Uh, is your project going to be, that, that software, is it going to be for uploading of uh, multimedia files only? Or would it be able to upload also like the digitalized books to Wikisource? Because there's uh, EOD project uh, in European Union yeah, and stuff like that. No, it's... Uh, it's it is out of the scope of this project. It focuses on mass uploading of multimedia files uh, and the related metadata. Uh, maybe uh, if it's a good framework, uh, it's open source project, so people can always attach things to it. Uh, the, the key priority is to get the, the images, and the PDFs, and the videos, or whatever uh, media we're talking about, on the commons in a proper form with the right metadata. And that's a start, and from there on we can work on to uh, Wikisource or Wikipedia or uh, go in all the different directions, but we first need to do the first step. The 
one of the crucial things we were discussing just this week um, was the fact that this project is not going to be built and then landed upon the Commons community at the end uh, and launched, ta-da, at which point everyone complains. Um, the, and, and Europeana has not worked like this before, but I'm very pleased to see that they are willing to, to do it like this, that this project will be done iteratively through MediaWiki.org uh, with you know, the, all the uh, coding standards that we know and love and hate uh, of, of MediaWiki. So it's not some external thing that you cannot change or provide ex extra plugins to. So um, do you want to talk more about the, the timeline of how that will, will actually work in practice? Mentioned the kickoff, uh, yeah, one of the reasons we uh, well, one of the reasons we want to start up in April is first of all we, we need to recruit and we need to define the project more closely together with the community. But in April, from what I understand, there's going to be a big technical hackathon in Berlin. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah there probably will be, but the date isn't set yet. Yeah. Uh, where a lot of developers who have experience in developing for the. Uh, in Tool Server and the Wikimedia Labs platform will come together. It's a great place to have a kickoff for this project because uh, you ca could have something of a coding or system design sprint there. Um, yeah, like I said, we have the, we have some goals in mind, but uh, we haven't. Uh, we don't know the full. Uh, we don't know exactly all the details, the exact system specs. Uh, we're starting up, we're at the idea uh, base right now. We know the goals, but uh, what we do know is that we need to build this as the kind of framework where others can add functionality um, and plug it into the framework. Uh, from, from your Ghana perspective, uh, I would like to add also that this is a great you know, opportunity to, uh, uh, to work with uh, uh, the Wiki community um, to facilitate the, uh, the glance in uploading their content uh, if, uh, if it also helps them improve their metadata or uh, realize that that needs improvement uh, and, and, and getting a, a better grip on what they need to, need, they need to do to, uh, to get there. Uh, that would be a great side effect of it as well. So uh, I see a, a lot of uh, um, benefits in, uh, in working together. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, question up the back, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to know where to actually send the feedback. Or is there already a wiki page or something available? Or is this presentation somewhere this public? This is where you will send feedback. Okay. No so electronic to way to start. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Of course, there will be. There is not currently a wiki page because we are announcing this now, uh, and there will be a wiki page. Probably you will create it. And yeah, this is being videoed and put online today. That slide presentation will be shared as well today, so that will form the basis of the of the page. The Wikimedia Commons community should really get involved with the whole project. This is. A we don't want to have, uh, like, we're in halfway and everyone say, no, this sucks. We don't want to have it. It has to be a project built for the community, used by the community. Otherwise, uh, it won't work. I know this is a Commons project, but I'm um, working with um, some museums in Israel. One of the things that they have is information centers, and they want to upload their stuff um, into articles uh, and then get it back. Are you going to deal with it as well? You mean like text or? Yes, text and the, what's, what interests them is to uh, get it just like metadata. They want to, uh, to track the changes and be able to update whatever no. they have in their own. That's outside the scope of the project. So we're, pass we're passing around uh, three post-it notes again, uh, another post-it note exercise, with three questions. Yeah, one screen. 
this is the first feedback because this group here at Glam Camp is the obviously one of the core user bases of this project. And if this project is to succeed, it will need to be done in not only in consultation with, but the active support of the Glam Wiki community.